photoelectric effect, you might have guessed, involves two things, light and electrons. It's actually the main piece of evidence for the quantum theory of light. That means that it proves that light acts as a particle. Incidentally, Isaac Newton was the first person to come up with a quantum theory of light when he thought that light traveled in little packets called corpuscles, but he thought that they had mass. But then a guy called Huygens, or if you want to pronounce it properly, it's a uh, he came along and said, actually, it acts like a wave, and we see that with diffraction. But this is the main piece of evidence that light acts as a particle. And that means that light comes in discrete packets of energy. And we call these photons. Now the energy of one photon, we find out, is equals to HF. F being the frequency of the light, and H being Planck's constant. That's 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. Albert Einstein was the one to revive Newton's particle theory of light, but with a few changes. Einstein and people after him did experiments with light and electrons to prove that this is the case. What we find is that if we have a piece of metal, now we know that metals are lattices of ions surrounded by delocalized electrons. What we find is that if we shine light at a metal, we actually see electrons being popped off. That's an electron, and that's an electron. Now, this would make sense with a wave theory of light, but the problem is, if the wave theory of light was correct, or it was the only correct model for light, then we should see electrons liberated, that is, jumping off the surface of the metal, with any frequency of light. so long as it's bright enough. If light just acted like a wave, then we'd have a brighter light and more waves coming in, and they'd be absorbed by the electrons. The electrons get the energy from the light and they would be liberated. But we do not see that being the case. Now, when these electrons are liberated from the surface of a metal, they have kinetic energy. So they're able to move away from the metal because they have this kinetic energy. Question is, how do we measure this kinetic energy? Here's the setup that we have. Now this is an evacuated tube because we want electrons to jump from one plate to the other without bashing into anything else, so no gas is allowed in there. What we do is shine a light on this plate here. What happens? The light comes in and it's absorbed by the electrons on the plate and they jump off there. What do we have? We have a current being set up in the circuit. Forget about this battery for now. So. When we shine light, electrons are liberated off the surface of this metal, they jump to the other side, and we have a current being set up here, and we measure a current with our ammeter. But how can we measure how much energy these electrons have? We incorporate a battery into our circuit. If we have a battery set up this way around, then it's actually going to try and stop the electrons from reaching this plate here. And that's what we do. To measure the kinetic energy, of electrons, what we do is turn the voltage up, or the EMF, on our battery until no electrons reach the other side, or reach the other plate. What we've hit is our stopping potential, we call that Vs. Now we know that any voltage is energy divided by charge. This energy, therefore, that's supplied to the electrons that should match the kinetic energy that they have coming off this plate here. So let's just rejig this a little bit. Vs, the stopping potential, is a potential enough to counteract the kinetic energy. That's half mb squared divided by the charge. Now the charge of an electron is E. So that's Ek, that's kinetic energy divided by E. Therefore, the kinetic energy of an individual electron can be calculated by doing the charge of an electron times the stopping potential. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times whatever potential we need to stop the electrons jumping this gap here after they've absorbed a photon of light. Now I've left a little space here because I need to put in here Ek max. 
Now we put the max in there because we really are only concerned about electrons liberated from the surface. Electrons can be liberated from maybe one layer down, two layers into the metal. We only care about electrons that are coming right off the surface of the metal. If that's the case, then they're gonna have the maximum possible kinetic energy to jump this gap. So that's how we can measure the kinetic energy of these electrons. So let's see what happens when we now change the frequency of light that's coming onto this plate here and we measure the electrons EK max. Now what we see happening is when we have a very low frequency, we get no electrons liberated at all. So we have a flat line. And that will carry on being flat if we increase the frequency until we hit a certain frequency. And then all of a sudden, electrons will start being liberated and the higher the frequency, the more kinetic energy they get. We call this frequency here the threshold frequency. Now why is that? Why do we have to reach a certain threshold frequency before we start getting electrons being liberated? Well, that's because if we extrapolate this line down here, we end up with a negative energy and we're gonna call that minus phi. This energy here is the energy needed to liberate an electron. In other words, if we have this frequency of light here, the photons do not have enough energy to give the electrons to liberate them from the surface of the metal. It's only after we hit this threshold frequency that we start getting electrons being liberated. This energy here is always the energy that an electron needs to be liberated, and then any energy it left, has left over, it's going to have as kinetic energy. So now we have a straight line graph. Any straight line graph is y equals mx plus c, where m is our gradient, c is our y-intercept, but in this case, we don't have y, we have ek max equals, now it turns out that the gradient of this line is Planck's constant itself, times x, which is our frequency in this case, our y-intercept is minus phi. So people find this equation fairly confusing, but it really isn't. This here is the energy left over for an electron after it's been liberated. This is the energy given to it by the photon. And this here is the energy needed to liberate it. Energy equals energy, take away energy. We calculate the energy left over as kinetic energy by taking the energy given to it to begin with by the photon, and take away the energy needed to liberate it. And that's what we have left over. So this is our photoelectric effect equation. Now we know that when we hit the threshold frequency, then the photon's just giving the electron enough energy to be liberated, but it's gonna have no energy left over. So we can say that in this case, zero, that's no kinetic energy equals HF minus phi, but F is our threshold frequency. So that means that our threshold frequency is equals to phi, that's the work function, divided by Planck's constant. Phi, this energy needed to liberate something is what we call the work function of a metal. That's gonna be different for every type of metal. So what did the photoelectric effect prove? First thing that it proved is that higher intensity, that's more photons, did not increase the kinetic energy of the electrons. So that must mean one photon is absorbed by one electron. In other words, you can't have two photons being absorbed by the same electron and therefore it having twice the energy. That doesn't happen. And so like we said earlier as well, that means that light exists as quanta. In other words, it exists in tiny little bits of energy, not just one big messy wave. It is specific individual bits of light known as photons. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please leave a like. And if you think I've missed anything or have any questions, please leave a comment down below. And I'll see you next time.